All right, guys, welcome to your final web view tutorial. I don't even know what that's doing there. Um, and this, we're going to focus on the web client. So we're going to focus on what's called web Chrome client. And essentially what this is, is the, this object allows you to modify almost everything to do with web view. You can set a client on a web view and you can modify all kinds of things with web view you can modify how it loads you can modify what it does on certain url loading how it, uh, when errors are received you can do lots of neat stuff so i'm going to create a client Okay, and we import it, android.webkit. And that's our client created. Now, uh, on Eclipse, if you uh, right click, you can go to source, uh, implement override methods, or for shortcuts on Windows, you can tap uh, control, uh, Alt Shift S. And here, now, Web Chrome client has all these methods we can override to do modifications. And like here's one here, look. On geolocations, permissions show prompt, string callback. This actually allows you to, like that for example tells me now that uh, when the WebView Chrome client, so when this WebView wants to access geolocation permissions from the HTML5 API, I can actually modify how that behaves at that point. I can say yes or no. Show custom view on progress changed. There's some really neat stuff you can do here. So on progress changed, is a cool one that allows you to uh, uh, draw progress bar for example or set the progress bar on an activity set, like if it's loading you can maybe have a loading icon appear in the action bar while the webview client is loading and you can do all kinds of cool things that's the webview chrome client and it's just awesome the stuff you can do on console message when a message is received by the console um, if any of you have worked with uh, Chrome, you'll know that you use the console a lot, particularly for JavaScript. You can actually have that work. We can also modify this to just be a web client. Okay. And import. Ah, sorry, web view client. Sorry, not web Chrome client. And if we do the same thing again, there's loads more things we can do now. You can override these on either one, I believe. So on load resource, on page finish, on page started, on received error, for example. So we can actually receive an error. So on received error, and then this here, look, will uh, error code, so that could be HTTP 404, whatever, uh, description, failing URL, and you can actually say like, what you want to do when it fails to load. There's some really neat stuff you can do with web views. Um, but the one we're int int interested in is, should override URL loading. That's the one we're going to be interested in for now. So what this does, this method is called every time the thing loads a new URL. Now this is a very, very useful thing. Essentially it allows you to redirect an application to inside your app. And it's a, a little bit confusing as well. So when you tap on a link, it goes, I need to load this URL. It checks this method to see what it should do with that URL. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say toast dot make text this URL dot length long. And this method uh, dot show, not show, show. Ah, yes, we need a context. Oops. Uh, this was referring to the Chrome client, which you're not allowed to use. Add return statement. Um, so 
So if we want the uh, the web view to handle the or tell, so if we have returned false, this will essentially tell the web view to go, okay, don't it's override the URL has been overrided. Don't load this URL. If we return true, it tells continue with the overriding. So what we'll do is we'll tap false. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll put a link inside our HTML just above our header here. And we'll say hey href equals uh, http dot slash slash uh, youtube.com and we'll close off our tag actually you know what we'll do we'll very quickly wrap this in a h1 tag just to make it a decent feckin size Okay, so now if we run this, any links we click on won't work. This will essentially uh, deny the links, and this is very useful. So if we click on this. Okay, and what I've actually realized all of a sudden is, and I'm very stupid, uh, we never set the client on the thing. Uh, we need to say web view. Set web view client client. Okay, good. You have to set the client on the web view because it, it can't just pick it up all of a sudden. And see, look, YouTube.com comes up, and and uh, what it's actually done is. Okay, yeah. So what's happened there is it's going through the redirect youtube.com and met m.youtube.com so it should override your loading and that's what that does now generally what you do here is you use an if statement a great example where this is very very useful is with the uh, OAuth authentication particularly on something like Twitter where you provide a callback and then when the uh, when you when the user has authenticated your app you'd have the page in a web in a web view they tap that and then it would come back to this and you say if it matches your callback URL which could be any string you desire it'll work and it's really cool but that's essentially override URL loading you can do some really neat stuff with this uh, web view stuff you can if any of you are used to working with HTML you can do some really super neat uh, CSS styling URL loading uh, modif modifications on received error so if we try and load a URL that doesn't exist uh, what we'll do is we'll just very quickly make a toast uh, the text will actually be a description uh, dot then short dot show uh, super unreceived error so what we're going to do is we're going to break this here by just getting rid of this and we're going to say um, do da. So that's a, that's obviously an illegal protocol. So when this tries to run, when I click that link, there's going to be an error saying a 404 not found, for example, and it will describe it to us when I click that link. So look, the protocol, the description was the protocol is not uh, supported. So obviously you might have to. Uh, I click back but if we go back into this the protocol is, isn't supported and I believe you can actually uh, make a web view a web view go back uh, I'll look up how to do that but you can do things like you know make the web view uh, go back on the back press go back a page go forward a page you can do some really neat stuff with this you can really tie it into your app and it's a really cool thing now the next video we're going to do something a little bit different we're going to do what's called javascript interfacing where when a user you can actually have javascript in your web view trigger your code in an android app which is really neat and we'll do that in our next video but as always guys it's been good talk i'll see you out there